again, here we're doing flamingos, but a question like this can be about dogs, it can be about cats, it can be about cabbages, it doesn't matter. We're talking about variation. So, flamingos are wading birds, okay? Wading means that they walk in the water and can wade into water to search for food, okay? So they're telling you what wading means. The longer their legs are, okay, the deeper they can wade into the water, which immediately tells you what are we going to be looking at? We're looking at the length of the legs, okay? The guys with long legs can go deep and find food. The guys with short legs, well, if there's no more food in the shallow water, they're going to starve to death and die. All right, so now they've given you your clues and they've told you what it is you're going to be answering. So the first question they do is they throw you a little bit of a curveball and they say, what is biological evolution? And everybody goes, ah! We haven't learned about bio biological evolution. Yes, you have. Evolution is change over time. Biological uh, evolution is about organisms, living organisms, okay? And what they look like now from a common ancestor and what happened? They changed generation after generation after generation. You can see the difference. That's what biological evolution is. Do you know how many learners mess this question up? Because they say, oh, we know what evolution is. We don't know what biological evolution is. Use your common sense, guys and girls. Use your common sense. You are now 18, 19 years old. You have got lots of it. And you've been learning for 12 years. Use this. Use it. Use it. Otherwise, Lamarck's going to make sure you lose it. Okay, don't. We want to use it. So here we go. Define biological evolution, and this is what you're going to say. Present day, okay, so now, currently, present day, organisms, okay, have descended or come from common ancestors, okay, and show genetic, all right, in the genes, genetic changes that have taken place or occurred, taken place and been inherited over one generation, two generations, no, many generations. So there you go, change over time. And it's genetic changes over time so that we no longer look like those common ancestors. All right, now, in terms of natural selection, explain why there are more flamingos with long legs than flamingos with shorter legs. Okay, I'm going to show you whether, listen, whether this question is about colorful snakes that look like a poisonous version and dull snakes. Whether it is about um, tortoises with long necks or short necks. It doesn't matter. The same process is going to apply. So here we go. Number one, you are going to state the following. You're going to say, there is variation in the, in this case, length of the legs in a flamingo population. They tell you this in the question. So that's already one mark. Tidding, thank you for coming. Now two, you are going to state what that very, you say there's a variation. Now you're going to say what the variation is. You say some have long legs or long necks or colorful bodies and some have shorter legs. Okay, so you've now said what this variation is. Okay, now you're going to, number three, explain it. Doesn't matter what the animal is, you're now going to explain the, what the advantage and disadvantage is. So you say, when there is a shortage of food, long-legged flamingos can 
weighed deeper and eat and survive. Doesn't matter how you put that, but the fact is they can go in further because their legs are long and they can survive. Now, the issue is, but, but what about the other character, the short, the short leg guys? So the other characteristic, the other variation is that, but short leg flamingos, ay, 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 flamingos can't go deep. So they, what happens? Starve and die. Because the, the environmental pressure is that, guys, the food is deeper. <clears throat> You've got long legs, you can get there. If you don't have long legs, well, I'm afraid you're going to starve. And if you starve, you die. And if you die, you can't pass your genes on to the next generation. Okay, so number three. Number four is what's the impact? Now, look at the words I've written here. You state the that there is a variation. Then you explain what that variation is. Then you, exp what they then you explain the, the good and the bad. And then the impact, well, long leg flamingos survive. And they breed. And what happens? They pass the favorable um, allele or characteristic, but it's the allele that carries the characteristic anyway. The favorable allele to the who? Next generation. People, this is survival of the fittest. This is natural selection. Okay, what happens? There is variation. What is the variation? Explain. The good variation, that's why they survive. The bad one, they die. If they die, they can't reproduce and pass that, that uh, characteristic or the alleles for that characteristic onto the next generation. This is natural selection. Okay, where am I? Impact, long leg flamingos survive, they breed, they pass the favorable to the next. Okay, and then five, you just finish off your question. You say, therefore, more, in this case, long leg legged flamingos. Oh man, I keep wanting to write flamingos with an E. And I did here too. Sorry, it mustn't have an E. Flamingos, um, more long-legged flamingos in the population. Okay. Done, done, done. Six marks. Thank you for coming. Learn it. Make sure you know it. Name three reproductive isolation mechanisms that play a role in keeping a species separate. N B. Everything I've done today, people, is N B. So there are only four, and they are going to make sure that you have to know this. So, what are reproductive isolation techniques? Number one, breeding at different times of the year. Okay, that's number one. Number two, species. Specific, okay, so specific to a species, courtship rituals or behavior. Okay, if the female is there and the male comes and he da 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 and he does his little thing and his courtship behavior and she doesn't like it because it isn't for her species, she doesn't let him near her. So no mating takes place. Okay, the, your, your species-specific courtship rituals are very, 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 very specific. All right, then number three, and this is a very important one, produce fertile, uh, sorry, 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 infertile offspring. So when there is a problem, and I've got the wrong species. So let's say I have a horse and a donkey. They produce a mule. What happens? They are infertile. They cannot carry on producing. So it's a, a reproductive isolation mechanism. Okay? So infertile offspring. And number four, prevention of fertilization. So 
breeding at different times of the year, species-specific courtship rituals, produce infertile offspring, so everything stops right there, or prevention of fertilization. In other words, the egg cell doesn't even allow the sperm cell to enter, or the male cannot get his sperm into the female. All right, now, something else I want to add here. Please make sure you know sources of variation. So what are the sources of variation? And they can ask this in paper one, please, and in paper two. So remember, C-M-R-R-R. -R -R. Nice little nonsense word. So C, C is for crossing over. So what is going to cause variation in, an, in a population? Crossing over during um, a little uh, prophase. Uh, yeah, yeah, prophase one. Okay, then M mutations, and then the R is random arrangement of chromosomes during metaphase one and two. Okay. Mm, all right, and then random mating, and we have random, fer uh, ran uh, I'm, I'm going all blank here, and random fertilization. Okay, people, so random fertilization. Remember, every time you're Punnett square, there are four different uh, um, combinations of gametes, all right? So, crossing over, random arrangement of, of chromosomes during metaphase one and two, random mating and random fertilization. Please learn them, all right?